guys know what this load is, as I already told you. So pay attention. You guys are going 3,000 foot a second. Go one click left. It feels like you're getting punched in the face. <laughs> got it again. I think I got it where it belongs. The time I flipped it up. I hit two. Hey guys, Lentcak here. And uh, once again, give you a guess. Yep, I'm at the range. Gonna do a little uh, shooting. I got a little experiment set up today. You know, I gotta find a reason to come out and shoot. So, uh, you know, so I can rationalize it. But uh, as usual, there is the mighty 17 second Crown Vic. And um, a little, uh, a little, little heads up. I have some, uh, what I consider some fairly exciting news in regard to the Mighty Crown Vic and others maybe. But uh, here before too long, uh, hopefully I'll be able to put together some video of, uh, of that and uh, we'll see what you guys think of that. But today, this is what I'm going to do. I have my uh, Private Series K31 here. And you guys have seen me shoot this before. Um, I went through the whole iteration of uh, putting a scope on it and playing with that, which, I don't know, I thought it to be uh, iffy, you know, for reasons you'd have to watch the video to see. But anyways, today my experiment is, because I've often wondered, is there a difference between a Boxer Prime cartridge and a Berdan Prime cartridge? So, as an experiment today, I've loaded up 10... Identic, 20 identical rounds, 10 Boxer Prime, 10 Berdan Primed, and I'm going to set up my chronograph here and see if I can't get some uh, velocity readings because I'm using a load uh, with powder and bullet that I have not ever used before, uh, primarily because that's really all that was available. But nevertheless, you know, you got to make do with what you got. But at any rate, guys, that's, uh, that's where I'm at today. It looks like it should be a pretty decent day out. But uh, I gotta get my crony set up and let's see if we can't uh, get to doing some shooting here. All right guys, on to my, on to my little experiment here. Um, what these are is, as I mentioned before, I have 10 of them loaded into GP11 brass with Bernan primers. And I got 10 loaded in uh, commercial brass. Um, Looks like it's looks like graph brass. Yep, it's uh, into graph brass. Uh, these are Hornady 165 grain SST rounds. They are boat tail. They have a uh, a Chandler on them. Um, I've got. I'm using IMR Enderon 4451 powder, which I've never used before, and also I've never used these these uh, projectiles before either. Um, I have uh, the uh, Boxer Prime cases are uh, primed with CCI bench rest primers. I think. Yep. Bench rest primers. And I have these rounds loaded to 30 thousandths off of the land. So I think I'm going to take my first shots with the uh, Berdan, Berdan primed uh, rounds. I'm going to put five, five in the mag. Crony is on. It uh, flattened out the Berdan primer pretty good. 
high. I'm going to bring the windage or the elevation down a little bit. Take a look. 2507. Twenty-five forty-four. All right, that's in the ten ring, pretty just off the orange bullseye. Twenty-five oh seven again. All right, that's good. That's putting them right there. Starting to starting to put them in there, so that's good. Twenty-five forty-seven. That is uh, ten ring again, just uh, just left of the orange uh, orange bullseye. I think I'm going to run five of the boxer prime cases through it now. See what happens. Doesn't really show much of any flattening on that one. Twenty five forty, same velocity. All right, that one looked like it uh, went a little bit low, a little bit to the left. But like I say, I'm trying to I'm trying to see if there's any kind of appreciable difference between the two types of uh, priming that these things have. Yeah, those look good. Twenty-five forty-nine. It's the right elevation. Looks like it went a little bit right on me though. Twenty-five forty-six. I think that one is like the uh, hole that is basically 12 o'clock just above the orange bullseye. Twenty-five thirty-five. Kind of pulled that one around a little bit right again. Twenty-five fifteen. My first impressions are it would appear that the uh, boxer primed cases are a little more consistent on velocity. Uh, overall velocities are about the same though. And uh, although it would appear that uh, so far, I, I mean it's probably me, but it looks like the Berdan prime 
paces, shot a little better accuracy. These uh, boxer prime, last five shots I took, I, I'm kind of all over the place a little bit, but what do you want? I'm old and I, uh, I can't see. All right, guys, uh, round two of Berdan primed versus boxer prime. I'm going to run five uh, boxer primed again, finish that string out. Twenty-five thirty-two. That guy would be a, a pretty much a dead nuts bullseye, which kind of tells me that the uh, that I could do my job better, I suppose. Because that one, I took a little bit of time and lined it up uh, pretty well and. Try to get a uh, good clean string on this one. Twenty four sixty six. Holy shit, that was way off the. That was a little bit low, a little bit right. Five oh four. Yeah, that's that's more like it. That's right next to my uh, first shot. That was a bullseye. You know, my eyesight isn't getting any better. It's uh, a sad thing, but it is what it is. And I used to be. I could see the diopter sights pretty darn good. Uh, but uh, bottom line is, I think the errancy in the group is due to my inability to produce the uh, continuous sight picture. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but shooting diopter sights at 100 yards for me is, is pretty challenging. Twenty-five thirty-four. That's not too bad. That's a uh, ten ring. Let's see if I can get one last decent shot out of this uh, out of these boxer prime cases. Actually, with so far with the one that went low and right, uh, it's, should, they shoot pretty good. It seems like now. Okay, it's my last one for the Boxer Prime cases. Yeah, that one pretty much went completely off the rails. I think, I think it's probably a, probably a pretty good load. It seemed to work, but damn. I think I need to do my part better. Right, the last five with the Berdan Prime cases, GP11 brass. Now you get that third one in there. Huh? Was that three or two? That was three. Well, three 2567. Over a little bit on the left three side. Yes, yeah, just sucked it up, sucked it up, and took about 10 steps and fell over, but. It just doesn't seem like it has the knockdown. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the right off the bat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
2564. Definitely shows a different point of impact. Five ten. That one I tried to hold off a little bit to the right and it uh, it moved over. Try one more, see if I can do a little Kentucky windage on it and uh, put it one in the ten ring. Twenty five thirty one. All right, guys, that's, uh, that's about it for my uh, test today. When I get home, I want to do some math on the uh, velocity numbers and the variation and that sort of thing, see if uh, it would appear the Boxer Prime cases produced a little bit more consistent velocities, albeit uh, basically about the same. Uh, the Boxer Prime cases seem to have a little bit more spread. But anyways, when I get home, I'll do some math on it and um, you know, let you know what uh, what those numbers are. But at any rate, that's uh, kind of the combination of my test today. Uh, seemed like as good of an excuse as any to get out here and you know do a little shooting, get outside for a little while. So, all right, guys, um, let me know what you think. Uh, I appreciate all my uh, subscribers, and uh, y'all be cool and don't drool. This is Len Keck, over and out. Okay, guys, um, put up a few clips of some uh, recent sniping I did on Battlefield 4 while I go over these numbers. Um, if I take all 10 shots and average them from each, uh, each loading, the Berdan and the Boxer primers, for the Berdan primers, averaging all 10, I get 2538. Keep that number in mind. It'll be, it's an interesting number for a reason I'll show you here. And on the Boxer Prime cases, I came up with 2522. Um, Berdan Prime cases, we show the uh, extreme spread at 68 foot a second. And on the Boxer Prime, 83 foot a second. However, I don't trust my chronograph all that much. It's a cheap one. So I'm going to throw out the high and the low on each one and average the 8. Now if I take and take out the uh, 2507 and 2575 for the Berdan primer I end up with an average foot per second of 2538. Interesting because that's the same uh, same average I came up with when I averaged all 10. But on the Boxer Prime side if I take out the 2549 and 2466 foot per second we show an average uh, averaging those eight at 2562 which is interesting because if you look at it that way the boxer prime cases actually show about a 24 foot per second increase over the Berdan prime cases um, what i did notice is the uh, Berdan prime cases they flattened out pretty much pretty well in the uh, in the uh, casing uh, the Boxer Prime cases, they nothing. There was nothing, nothing special. It just looked completely normal. But uh, as in as far as uh, accuracy goes, I'm not going to make too much. I was all over the place. I'm not going to make too much claims about it because I was. I was just kind of all over the place that day. So you guys can draw your own conclusions on that. Uh, take it for what it's worth. Like I say, that was an untried combination and a mold and I'm blind and I hadn't shot my doppers in a while been playing with my M1A stuff so I'm using that for my excuses for uh, not shooting very well um, so that's what I'm so that's how I'm playing that out all right guys I think that's um, I think that's about it I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, y'all take care and this is Lenkak over and out